Have you ever wrestled with a mix desperately trying to achieve that major label sound you hear on popular playlists? Well, I've been there too. Recently, I found myself in that situation, and today I'll walk you through an idea I had and how it got me to a better place to deliver a quality mix that my client loved. I've had the privilege to attend a Mix with the Master seminar with Andy Wallace, and it's crazy how that day sticks with me even after all these years. Andy mixed an Avenged Sevenfold track that day and his setup was really simple. He mixed it on an SSL with an outboard mix bus compressor. He also used three reverbs, two delays, and an SBX90 on that mix for chorus. And that was it. I mean, how simple is that? In this modern era, we can come up with some pretty advanced processing ideas, and a lot of them are really helpful. However, Andy's basic setup shows me that there really aren't any secrets to this stuff. That basic set of tools can be used to make a great mix, and there's a lot to learn from that. Today, I wanna to focus on one of the biggest takeaways from that seminar, and that's how well Andy balances his mixes. Not all of us have the luxury of sitting in a room with optimal acoustics, and not all of us have 30 plus years of mixing experience like Andy. Recently, I had a conversation with a friend, and he brought up the topic of mixing to a pink noise reference. Now, I've heard of this technique in previous years, but I think my ego just wrote it off. But in this current moment, I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a try. And to learn more about this technique, I began searching online, and I found an excellent article over on Sound on Sound about this technique. I'll put the link in the description for you. What happened next was something I wasn't expecting. As I started taking in this process, I had an idea. What if I take some finished mix stems from a previous project that I was stoked on, and I diagnose those against pink noise? What would those levels even look like? Is there anything I could learn about mix levels in general from doing this? All right, let's move over to the DAW and I'll show you where this idea led me. All right, so here is a song that I produced a few years ago. And I'm just gonna rock a little bit of the chorus so you can see what kind of song it is. All right, there you go. So you can see it's kind of a Paramore-esque sort of female-fronted rock band. Um, let's dive in and I'll show you what I did to reference uh, the levels of these stems against pink noise. So I've put uh, an instance of Isotopes Insight 2 across some of these stems that we're gonna check out. And I've created a track. Uh, this track, I'm gonna make it colorless real quick just so you can see it easy this is in my mix template all the time and I use this signal generator uh, to calibrate compressors and those sort of things any signal chain that I have in my mix template that needs calibration I use this track so you can see there are various sends here uh, I'm sending out to an input uh, and that input is just called sig gen for right now what I have here towards the right our stereo audio tracks. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is route from that signal generator to these stereo audio tracks. Now, why are they stereo? Well, my mix template, everything comes down to a stereo group, like say the kick drum. If it's mono and I have three mono tracks, it all goes to a folder track named kick and that folder track is stereo. So. That, your mileage may vary, but for me, I'm always referencing stereo. Now, let's dive in. So, from there, let's take a look at the drums. Let's try to find a kick drum. I believe there's one in the verse here. There's like a four on the floor pattern for the verse. Yeah. All right, my apologies. Let's mute everything except for the drum stem. We're gonna focus on just trying to get the level of the kick drum by itself. Okay, now this isn't an exact science. Like I said, I just had this idea. Now, I'm gonna use RMS. I might be wrong in that. You may wanna use a different value, whether it's the integrated LUFS or the short term. 
but I'm just going to use RMS here. All right, so you can see on the RMS that that kick is about minus 13.3. Minus 13.4. All right, so now if I switch back over to the mix view, if I toggle the input of this stereo kick track that I have, you'll see my signal generator activates. I have it muted because no one wants to listen to pink noise. So, and as you can see here, There we go. On the audio volume indicator inside of Pro Tools, you can see that that signal is coming through at minus 13.4. So those match, right? Now let's record that to this track. That's why it's an audio track. I'm just gonna hit Command Spacebar real quick. All right, so now there I have a pink noise reference at the kick drum volume of this stem. I'm going to hit Y on my keyboard and send that audio region all the way to the front of the session. Now let's do that for the snare. All right, there's a good snare that kind of sounds by himself. If it's not clean, uh, you know, if it's not just a solo snare, like if there's cymbals and stuff, I think that's all right. Again, this whole idea isn't prescriptive. It's just meant for reference, kind of get us in the ballpark. Now, obviously there's some symbols there, right? So minus 14.5 looks like. All right, let's try it. I'm going to hit record over here. All right, now we've got our snare. Let's get rid of this stuff. Go back to the session here. I'm going to hit Y and send that snare all the way to the front. So now if I, I am going to unmute these for a second and just loop. So if we had a loop, kick and snare, in pink noise, this is what it would sound like. Now I repeated that process all the way through the mix. I did guitars, I did bass, I did lead vocals, I did background vocals. I found a little sliver where there was some overheads where the drummer was just rocking, you know, the beat on the overheads to try to just kind of see where those levels were. And then from there, you could do what that sound on sound article says. You basically pull an individual element up against that pink noise volume until it, you barely start to hear it. Like say the kick drum, for example. <clears throat> Where were we at? Uh, I lost it. Well, the snare's still up. I should have wrote it down. What was that minus 13 something? Minus 13.5, I think. Let's go back to the kick. So I'm going to write that down, minus 13.4, and then the snare was minus 14.5. Okay, so now in my mix, I would go to my kick drum, I would activate that pink noise track, and I would bring my kick drum till it barely started to reach, and, and, I, could, uh, and I could hear it over top of that pink noise. And then I would do that down the line, and all of a sudden, you know, once you get everything in, you're like, I found in that mix that I was working on, I was like, dang, that balance feels pretty good. Well, of course, I still had a lot of mixing to do. That was just my rough balance with panning and volume. I then applied my EQs. I applied my compression or any dynamics that was needed throughout the mix. I applied my effects. 
And then from there, I just went through my process. You know, I printed a mix, listened to it in the various consumer devices that I have and that I like to reference my mixes on. And then I just repeated the process. But what I found was really interesting that this approach or this idea got me a little closer to a finished mix than I have experienced in recent months. And I thought that would be really fun and I thought I'd share that with you. So there you go. I found myself in a tricky spot and a friend steered me into this topic that made my brain get some exercise. The outcome was something I found pretty interesting. As I mentioned, I won't be using pink noise to balance my entire mix, but it is a neat trick to get us started. Especially if you have some mix stems from like one of your favorite mixers or somebody that you've hired and they have gave you stems. You can get a glimpse into their process and how they balance a mix. Let's see what you think. Try it out and let me know if that helps. If you like this one, please hit the like and subscribe button for me and I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.